But before we get to all that, let's talk about what a real estate team actually is. By definition, a real estate team is a group of professionals that come together to close more deals than they could separately. Not every member of a real estate team has to be licensed, but in order to function at a high level, most need to be. A real estate team can be as small as a single licensed agent with an unlicensed part-time assistant or as large as a group of 50 buyer's agents, listing specialists, marketers, admins, and more. I know this sounds exciting, but before you book an entire restaurant for your team's holiday party, let's start small. If you're starting a real estate team, you are typically taking on the principal role, the team leader. The team leader is often the person whose business has grown beyond the constraints of their own time and ability. If you want to keep expanding, you're going to need some help. The first person a team leader often hires is an admin or a real estate assistant. An admin works to lighten the load of the team leader, taking tasks off their plate that don't directly contribute to client relationships resulting in closings. Now we all know how important maintaining your social media is, or correctly filing listing paperwork with your brokerage, or preparing the supplies you'll need for next week's open house, but these are tasks that aren't advancing any of your client relationships directly. They're actually preventing you from spending time growing your business. These are perfect tasks for an admin. Now, make no mistake, this work is far from unimportant. It's just work that, at this stage in your career, is best reviewed rather than tackled yourself. Since admins and assistants don't need to be licensed, they're typically paid hourly, usually starting between 12 and 15 bucks an hour and going up based on skills and experiences. As I said, after your admin lightens your load, you'll have more time to grow your business by focusing on client activity, lead generation, and other tasks that will expand your sphere of influence and create more closings. And as that growth continues, you'll quickly identify other areas of business where there's definitely opportunity, but only so much time. Working with buyers is one of those areas, which is why a buyer's agent is usually the next hire for a real estate team. Now, no real estate professional in their right mind would voluntarily turn down clients, but sometimes agents are more hesitant to work with buyers because of the time commitment. Running buyers around to showings, being available to answer questions, especially for first-time buyers, managing the mortgage process once a property gets under contract, it, it all takes time. And when your schedule gets full again, a full-time buyer's agent can allow you to focus on working with sellers and managing the business as a whole. A buyer's agent needs to be excited to be active every day. Successful buyer's agents are running around with clients five days a week. They need to be great with time, be solid communicators, and maybe most importantly, they need to work well with you and your admin. Chances are you'll be passing a lot of leads in this person's direction. You need to know they are keeping everyone on the team in the loop, both in terms of the progress of their clients and the nurturing of their opportunities. A buyer's agent needs to be licensed in order to take buyers to prospective properties. So more often than not, a buyer's agent is paid 100% in commission. Usually the lowest person on the commission totem pole a buyer's agent typically makes anywhere between 35 and 50% of the commissions for the deals they close. After a buyer's agent, the next natural addition to your team is a listing specialist. A listing specialist can help share the load with you as the team leader of converting listing leads into listing clients. Listing specialists are typically more experienced agents and they need to have excellent skills especially when it comes to pricing a home properly. Remember, the correct pricing of your listings affects just about everything, from your list to sale ratio, your days on market, and ultimately your seller client's experience with your team in terms of meeting expectations. Since listing specialists are usually more experienced in the business, they tend to capture a slightly higher commission rate, usually anywhere from 50 to 65% of commissions. Okay. As a team leader, your team is really coming together. You've got an admin to help dot the I's and cross the T's. You've got a buyer's agent who's servicing the bulk of your team's buyer clients and a listing specialist 
to help with all the great seller clients you're getting. So who do you hire next? Well, if you've got three full-time licensed agents on your team, you're undoubtedly closing a lot of transactions, which makes the transaction coordinator the next logical step for your team growth. Once a buyer or seller goes under contract, there's a lot that needs to happen to get them to the closing table, including filing paperwork with appropriate parties, scheduling inspections, appraisals, coordinating with mortgage companies, closing companies, and, and making sure everyone has the right paperwork at the right time. This is generally something an agent can handle on their own, but if your team is closing multiple deals a week, providing support to you and your team using a transaction coordinator whose entire job is to monitor the, and facilitate the closing pipeline will allow your buyer's agent and listing specialist to focus more on client work. For the same reasons you got an admin, get a transaction coordinator. Your team will definitely thank you. Transaction coordinators don't have to be licensed, though some of them are. Unlicensed coordinators tend to make about the same as an admin, Licensed coordinators often will earn a wage rather than a commission, but it's usually 10 to 20% higher than an unlicensed coordinator. With you as the fearless team leader, a buyer, a seller agent to extend your client reach and a transaction coordinator to bring deals across the finish line and your admin to hold it all together, you've got a pretty solid team, but you're not done yet. Real estate teams can also grow their non-licensed members by adding marketing specialists, videographers, social media managers, and just about every other type of professional that supports the work of a busy real estate agent. Do you need these people? No, they aren't necessarily essential to the operation of your business. However, as the reach of your team grows, the number of listings on your docket expands and the expected closings each year gets bigger, you'll find that adding specialized individuals to your team is going to be necessary to break you through to Hall of Fame status.